Hi, everybody, and welcome to Tuesday, May the 19th. Uh, this is a Confidence on Camera lesson. I'm Michael Bean. If you want to know more about these, you can go to confidenceoncamera.com uh, and uh, find links to kids' classes and adult classes. Today is our confidence lesson. That's Tuesdays. And we're talking to Ricardo Ortiz, or Ricky Ortiz, uh, who started uh, taking class at uh, with me at Biz Studio, the kids and teens school that I run, uh, in fall of 2016. And uh, last year, uh, and, with, and so at, at that point had not worked at all in film and television. You know, and then last year did 20 episodes uh, as uh, the lead or one of the leads uh, in a, a universal show called The Jillionaires. Uh, and so he's going to talk to us today about his journey and what that looked like for him in building confidence and uh, booking that first really big role and booking his, his first you know, role in a couple of uh, years before that. You know, so uh, let's quickly look at uh, Ricky on IMDb. You know, he's, I mean, maybe because he's already here. First, we should look at his face. Uh, da -da. There he is, it's Ricky Ortiz. Okay, uh, and then we're back. Uh, so, here we go. Uh, this is uh, Ricky on IMDb. Some great photos here. Uh, the 100 unspeakable Gabby Duran and the Unsittables bajillionaires. You know, so we've got you know, 2017. So this um, you know, would have been you know, just in the uh, second year that he was uh, taking classes at the studio. Uh, the role on the 100, and then a recurring role on uh, Unspeakable uh, TV miniseries. Uh, you can see, uh, and then Bajillionaire is you know, 2018. So 2017, 2018, uh, 2019, 2019, 2019. Yeah, and this TV movie, uh, 2020 right now. Uh, Josh is giving you thumbs up because, you know, is, did, is you, did you work on that one too, Josh? Is that, yeah, okay, I thought so. Uh, so uh, Ricky sent a link to his demo reel, you know, um, and I pulled up some video from uh, the f first class that I could find on, uh, the, in the archives of my website, you know, so. Let me get that video started and, and then send you a link or um, share the screen with you rather. Uh, and then we'll watch his demo for comparison and then we'll talk to Ricky himself. Very slow, computer's very slow today. But it's coming, it's coming. I have confidence. There it is. Now I haven't had a chance to watch this before class, so this will be a surprise for me as well as for Ricky. Apparently there was no sound. Okay, so, so much for this demo. <laughs> well, that's a little embarrassing. Let's jump ahead and, uh, and see if the sound of the is eclipsed. Maybe let's just go uh, right to watching Ricky's demo reel, shall we? Uh, so that we get as much time with him as possible. Uh, now, uh, Ricky, I'm going to unmute you because you, uh, we're not going to watch the whole five minutes. You know, yeah. But if there are parts of this that you think we should jump ahead to, please let us know. Cool. He said I could have AIDS because of my, my hemophilia. 
Is this why we switch back to Kyle? Yeah. We're telling you this because we think you can handle it. And a lot of people are saying things right now, but the truth is nobody knows anything for sure. So this is a mini-series about the tainted blood scandal. Yeah, uh, is is this more of the same, uh, Ricky? Or is this? Uh, I want to jump ahead and show them a clip from Bajillionaires if I can. Okay, that one that you're on right now at two twenty three is a is a clip from Bajillionaires. Okay, perfect. Full disclosure: there's no science behind our detach. It's just a heartbeat monitor with a randomizer app. But what if you've accidentally stumbled onto something? What are the odds of that? You know, some of history's greatest inventions are accidents: Velcro, popsicles peanut butter and chocolate. Exactly! What if the heart attach is our peanut butter and chocolate? So, let's uh, let's go to uh, Ricky the real life human uh, after you know, for watching him in media. Uh, Ricky, thanks so much for uh, being willing to, to be our demo today and talk to us a little bit. Uh, no problem, thanks for having me. Uh, so if you uh, if you want to you know, switch to gallery view so you can see all the humans. Yeah, uh, I see everybody. Someone Olivia's in space right now. That's so cool. Uh, the uh, uh, let's get uh, you started. You know by uh, talking about you know uh, confidence. Like what what does confidence mean to you? Uh, confidence means to me. Uh, I find the best way to have good confidence is by always preparing lines, feeling that you have somewhat control mm -hmm. of what's going to happen in an audition or callback or just a regular day in set. So I think the more research you do, with, uh, if you're going to an audition, it's good to always research directors, uh, producers, who they are, what they've done, what kind of films they've directed or produced. It's always good to uh, research the people who already casted for the show or movie, whatever you're doing. But yeah, I think confidence is really important Important when it comes to acting. Uh, at first, I never really had uh, that much confidence when I was really young. And it took, it took me getting out of my shell to really see that, oh, I can really do this. You and know, and but, you did that with theater, right? Yeah, I started with theater as a school play. Uh, we did The Little Mermaid. And I remember really, I didn't want, I, we were, they were holding out auditions for Sebastian. I really didn't want to do it. My mom was like, oh, just, just go for it. You already have, the answer is already no if you don't do it. So at least try it. And I was really not, I didn't have any confidence. I just went, I tried it. And then I got the call back. And that's when I started like, oh, I, I can kind of really do this. So yeah. I can't tell if I've frozen or Ricky has. Oh. Oh yeah, everything. <laughs> okay. Oh, he's back. Hi. Can you hear us now, Ricky? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and switch my uh, internet connection. I hope that goes well. And if not, I know maybe I'll download more videos of Ricky, or let's talk about something else for a minute. Okay, I tr I've switched it. Is it better now? It is. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, the, so doing that little uh, bit of theater, uh, how much theater had you done before you started uh, taking class at the studio? Uh, zero. Oh, before the classes, I did I did do the play at school, yeah. but that was pretty much it. Really, and despite I, that, okay. I, I I was I did a lot of I did do a lot of like f like film really crappy films with friends. Mm -hmm. uh, those don't really count, but they oh, were. Oh, those totally way, count. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. they were like a way of us to like really just try it out and there's no, no one else, we wouldn't show it to anybody else. So we could really do whatever we wanted. And I guess that really helped. But no, besides that, it was really just the, the play I did in school before Great. classes. Uh, and then what was it like for you, uh, you know, getting an agent and starting to go out for auditions? Uh, doing, when I did the play, a lot of people, I, I didn't, I never really wanted, I never really thought of becoming an actor. But when I did the play, a lot of people started coming up to me and saying, oh, you're really good, you should get an agent. I'm like, what's an agent? <laughs> and then uh, until someone came up to me and said, oh, I, my agent is Corey. Uh, I can get into contact with him and see if he wants to be your agent. 
And that's kind of when things started. And then eventually I had a meeting with him and then I got an agent. And then I remember the first audition I did was for like a Star Wars commercial. I remember being really nervous, but then eventually I had really lots of fun. And then it just started going until callbacks. And then eventually I'm on set, you know, it was really kind of fast paced, but it took a, a long time to really start getting going. Uh, and it was like finding the fun that helped you get past the nervousness of it. Oh, sorry. It was finding the fun that helped you get past the nervousness. Yeah, of it. yeah, it, yeah. I remember being, I remember being really stressed out at first with it. Like I would get like, um, I would not really, I would get kind of nauseous mm -hmm. with it. But eventually, the more I did it, the more I realized, oh, this is this is just fun. This isn't really work. And that's kind of when it started going. Hmm. You know, if if you could go back and give like nervous you at the beginning like a piece of advice from now, you know what would that sound like? Uh, I'd say well, I'd give uh, advice that my mom tells me now, which is just do it. You you already have if you don't do it, you already have the answer of like no. So if you at least try it, you may get like another answer. I just say I just say just do it, pretty much. Okay, uh, and uh, then it was the. You know, about like a, a year and a half later uh, that you started uh, the bajillionaires, uh, right? That was like, a, there was multiple rounds of auditions, if I remember right. Yeah. Yeah, so that was in, beginning in 2017, I started, I did an audition for, a uh, self-tape audition for bajillionaires. Okay. Because uh, they were shooting in Toronto and they're like, and they were going all around the world. And I did an audition and it took like, it was, this was in March. And then I think by, uh, I think, by like April, yeah, April, last of April, then they finally called me back. And we, I did a callback with you, Michael. Mm. And it was a Skype callback, which is re was really weird, but um, it worked. And then eventually I went, after like two months, I went down to Toronto to do a chemistry read, which was like an hour and a half of just going back in the room, doing scenes with different people, coming out, waiting like five minutes, going back in, doing it. And then it just over and over again until finally uh, in summer, I got the part. And then I went down to Toronto, did the pilot for uh, 10 days. And then that was it. And we didn't ever hear back from it until beginning of 2018 when they said that the show got picked up and then they replaced the entire cast, but they wanted to keep me. So then I had to go down and do chemistry, uh, read with other people to like help them get their part, which was also kind of weird because everyone was like, oh, you already got the part, which was kind of like, it was kind of nervous because everyone kind of saw you as the kid. Oh, he already got the part. He doesn't have to like be worried about anything. But I was like really stressed out with it. But yeah. Ah, and and uh, what was it like? You're trying to do good work you know, while you're being really stressed out, both in that like first chemistry read and in the second one. Uh, it was uh, in the when the first chemistry uh, read we did in mm -hmm. 2017. I actually I remember throwing up in the bathroom before it. I had to like run right to the bathroom I threw up which which really helped actually because I, I got all that like stress out and then which uh, really got me going I think also the concentration the what really helped was that the the waiting room was very quiet so it really helped me concentrate on like okay what am I doing here I'm doing this who is this character blah 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 you know but when you got when you get in the room with all like the producers and directors you kind of just forget everything and you just go and you forget that you're you just enter another world and you're like you are these characters you know but yeah mm, great yeah and then um the what would you say how would you say that that affected you uh doing uh, did you did you do all 20 episodes in in one go or did was it spread out over two separate years uh the 20 episodes oh sorry what what, what do you mean by the question for, for bajillionaires like did, did did that all happen in 2018 or was it like summer 2018 and then summer 2019 or something no else. yeah the 20 episodes were all in the summer of 2018 so wow, okay it's a lot months yeah you know and so doing that much intensive shooting you know over the course of three months you know what would you say that you got out of that like how did that affect you and your sense of yourself as an actor or your uh, how did it affect the work uh i feel like at first I w it was it wasn't very good like the first few weeks it was like kind of overworked like is you have to wake up early in the morning, like 6 a.m. And you and then you go down, you work for 10 hours, you come back, it's already night, you have to prepare the lines for the next day. And then you just keep repeating this. But eventually you kind of start getting used to it. And it just starts becoming fun. Uh, 
I feel like it definitely helped me school wise. I was never like the best student, but doing this really helped me like get a sense of responsibility and how much it is important for you to be responsible for yourself and what time you show up and doing the lines. So it, it helped me with uh, other more other acting projects I do in the future and with just general life lessons. Cool. Um, the uh, how would you say that it affected your your acting and your auditioning afterwards? Like, did you did you notice a difference in the way that they felt or in the way that you approached them? Uh, I definitely felt a difference with approaching the scenes. At first, I never I would just memorize the lines. That's it. I would read the script and just memorize the lines. But after doing uh, Bajillionaires for three months. I've kind of, I've been, uh, I've been, I've been dissecting the scripts more. Mm -hmm. So really, like figuring out, okay, w what am I gonna do? Like it actually, like you know, seeing the stage direction, actually thinking, okay, I gotta do this, this by this line. What does this character mean? Let me see. What does this word mean? Let me search it up. So it uh, helped me be more prepared for um, auditions with uh, doing it over and over again. Uh, 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 yeah. Oh, sorry. Hold on. I had something else I wanted to say, but I forgot. Cool. Well, I mean, and that's that's where you started. You know, with uh, you, uh, your sense of confidence in auditions is strongly influenced by your preparation for them. Yeah. Cool. Um, the do we want to uh, open it up you know, to uh, folks and and see if they've got any questions for you? Sure. Okay. Uh, We've got, uh, now you all should be able to unmute yourselves if you have a question. You know, if you throw a, you know, a actual or virtual, you know, hand up in the air. Um, the, what question do you have that maybe I don't know to ask because I'm just too old? Right, like, you know, uh, the, the advantage of having Ricky, because we've had a couple of adults, you know, uh, for this, uh, but we haven't had somebody who's like closer to your age, you know, and so this is a great chance, you know, to go, you know, ask about something that you experience with auditions or with your own sort of confidence or journey of preparing scenes and go like, hey, is this normal? Uh, you know, to, um, uh, yeah, what, what do you want to know? Because I could keep asking Ricky questions forever, but come on now, help me out. Anybody? <laughs> okay, yeah, Josh, go ahead. I, can you hear me? Can yeah. I mute? Okay, got it. Awesome. Uh, so my question is, uh, how do you calm down your nerves when you're at an audition? Uh, do, do, you, do you mean at an do before an audition to calm down my nerves? I just uh, really practice the lines, uh, multitask the lines. I find uh, recording yourself doing the lines and then doing something else while like doing the scene with your recording really helps me get in the mood. But uh, yeah, just research the thing. But when you're in an actual audition, I find uh, getting my nerves down is really just putting on some music, some music that really calms you down and just look over the lines, you know, just think, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go in there, I'm gonna do my best. And if they don't like my best, then oh well, you know what I mean? But yeah, I feel like just really, a, I feel like quietness and like calm music really makes me more relaxed. Everybody. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. I got this uh, from uh, Ben Cotton, who was our guest, I think, a uh, week before last, you know, on the Tuesday. Uh, and he said, you know, when I go in, I bring a baseball cap and headphones. Uh, and in, in Vancouver, or really anywhere, that's code for I'm not available for conversation. <laughs> you know, because otherwise, you know, people will be excited to see you if you, they're people you know. You know or, and some, some people deal with their nervousness uh, by performing it. You know, it's in, they're like, I'm not nervous. Hey, Josh, oh my God, it's so great to see you. And they just really want to dump all of their nervousness on you. you know, by, and so if, um, something that has been really effective for me you know, is to you know, go in and like I said, you know, bring a hat and earphones and put them in before I walk in the door you know, so that I'm advertising right from the first moment. And then after the audition, of course, I can like look around and if there's people there, be like, Oh my gosh, Amy, it's so great to see you. You know, like, yeah, we'll see you at the next one. Bye. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but to not do that beforehand. Uh, I've told this story in class to some of you before, but uh, I had a student in uh, my class uh, named Lizzie who got to the uh, final round for one of these uh, big Nickelodeon open calls a couple of years ago. 
and you know Lizzie had been working on you know um, progressively bigger parts here you know sort of little stuff and she'd been like a, a supporting role in a tv movie and you know she had enough resume you know that she was like a being seriously considered for it so much that they flew her down to LA for a chemistry read uh and uh the uh, and she met with one of the producers the night before, like she had somebody on the team who was like on her side and like w worked over stuff with her. But then when she got to the chemistry read, the audition, she said that everybody in the waiting room, they were like, it was like they were all best friends and they were all like talking super loud and somebody was juggling and a couple of people were dancing. And one person was like playing the guitar and singing and like everybody was performing their nerves and doing a great job of it because they were all experienced performers. And it freaked her out so much that before she even stepped in the room, she had disqualified herself. Yeah, so, so just to throw out there that this thing that Ricky has just said, about um, being calm in the waiting room. In Vancouver, a lot of the time, you can count on the people in the waiting room being like fairly calm and respectful uh, because that's the way that people tend to deal with their nerves here is by like you know, trying to like kind of go inward and quiet them. It is actually a totally normal way to respond to nerves to like, Shah! put them out here and splash them around on other people. And so just to be prepared that if that happens, it does not mean anything, you know, and as you get to know yourself in auditions, hopefully you will learn which, which style works best for you. Um, the folks I know who, uh, like, what really helps them and grounds them is to have somebody to talk to. Uh, often do what, you remember uh, Olivia, when she came in maybe like four or five weeks ago, you know, said that uh, when she was going out for her last, the, like, her really big audition uh, in LA, she brought a friend. Right, so rather than like have other people there, you know, who are also nervous, you know, and risk like spiraling out on it, she just brought somebody who she knew she could talk to, you know, because she knew that that grounded her. Like you have lots and lots of options when you're auditioning. Uh, yeah. Anybody else have a question for for Ricky? We're, you know, we're getting uh, pretty close to our time. How how old were you when you uh, you know, did the play that got you started, Ricky? Do you remember? Uh, it was I think I was twelve or eleven. Okay, 11 or 12. I did it. Yeah. Yeah, and um, the, what is it like for you sort of weathering the, the ups and downs? You know, I mean, last uh, 2018, you spent three months, you know, working all the time, you know, and then, you know, you've had like a year and a half of uh, the, like you've, you've gotten to like really experience that thing that sort of all of these actors, you know, will eventually experience in their careers, which is like, tons all at once and then back to like wah, wah, wah. You're like your audition yeah. you're like hoping you get stuff and then you get something and you're excited but like the uh, how is that you know up and down for you uh i think working for three months was very fun you know i was getting to do what i love which is acting but then again it was over the summer so i was missing out kind of hanging out with friends and family uh going on vacation or whatever but after that, it was, yeah, it was like you said, it was really dead quiet, which I guess most people would view it as like kind of boring, but I was like a little like, okay, I get to take a break for mm -hmm. a bit. You know, I get to spend these months uh, being like, I guess a regular kid, you know, going to school, doing schoolwork, hanging out with friends, you know, until eventually I'll start again in like December. But yeah, it, it was, it was kind of, a, you had, I had to find a good balance with it, you know. Okay. So you, so you didn't like, uh, you didn't. Um, experienced like a big crash because you were just excited to like re-engage with your life after that. It was, I'd say it was a mix of that. It was like, oh, I, I, I really miss set life. I really miss going to set every day, hanging out with like people that I know and really care about. But then again, I do miss, I don't know, going on my computer mm -hmm. and playing like six hours video games or something, you know, but yeah. Uh, the, many of the um, professional theater actors I know just sort of expect that after the show closes, you know, there's going to be a week where they don't want to get off the couch. You know, like, and, and the ones who've been doing it for a long time, especially, are like, oh, yeah, I just, I just planned that week afterwards, like, that I'm not going to accomplish anything. <laughs> um, okay, the, uh, that's uh, pretty much our time today. If, you have, uh, if there's one of you that has, like, some last thing that you want to throw at Ricky, you know, the, uh, 
I don't know, final thoughts, Ricky? You know, uh, anything that like you uh, have, have learned the hard way you know, through like uh, doing it and auditioning it, you know, that, um, th that again, you wanna like, you know, offer to like uh, 11, 12 year old you who's starting off? Yeah, I think I'd, I, I, um, I think a good advice is just keep doing it. It's gonna be rough in the beginning, but if you just keep trying, keep going for it, you know, keep having that energy and that confidence of uh, just going out and doing any audition that you can get will really help because eventually you'll get a part and then that way directors can see, oh, this person's really good and they'll tell someone else and then eventually you'll you'll start having a lot of fun. So I just say, keep trying, never don't give up. Cool, thank you. And uh, that's a great reminder to keep coming back to the fun. You know, I. I also want to echo what Ricky said and, and say that that act of just doing it over and over again, I think comes across to other people as confidence, regardless of you know, whether or not you feel confident all the time. You know, uh, I, I want you I want to remind you of the part of Ricky's story, you know, where like right before the chemistry read, you know, for the big thing that he booked, he was in the bathroom throwing up and then went into the room like, okay, now I'm like, now I'm just going to do the work. Uh, the that the confidence can look like that. I think one of the ways that we psych ourselves out about confidence is thinking that confidence has to look a certain way, or that especially confidence means that you don't feel fear. Yeah, you know, and I I want to point out that that is not Ricky's story is not reflective of somebody who is not feeling you know, fear and uh, and nerves. You know, just somebody who's like listening to it, navigating it, finding a way through it to find the fun and to find the work. Yeah. All right. Um, if y'all would unmute yourselves, you know, and so that we can uh, say thank you, Ricky. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Come on back tomorrow. We're uh, we're doing some work. Thanks, Ricky. Thanks for making the time for us. Bye. 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 Bye.